Well, hope you're tuned in right now and this will take care of most of that 30 minutes. All right. <laughs> And before we get started with our reading, with our read aloud, I am going to give you guys another read aloud benefit, which is reading aloud helps to increase your memory. Yep, it sure does. How? Well, because when that person is reading that story to you and they are asking questions either during the story or after the story, guess what? You have to be engaged. You have to be able to remember what it was that happened during the story. And you typically should be able to, especially if that reading aloud experience was a pleasurable one. And I hope that I am making these read alouds pleasurable for you guys out there as well. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. Let's begin. Here's our book. So you guys see that cover, right? And let's read the title together. The... Soccer Fence, a story of friendship, hope, and apartheid in South Africa. All right. And the author of this story, his name is Phil Bildner. The illustrator, his name is Jesse Joshua Watson. And actually, Jesse Joshua Watson, he is the author of a book called Hope for Haiti. And actually, that's one of the books that I have read as well. So check that out on our YouTube channel as well. All right. So when you look, check out the cover, what are some predictions? What do you think this story is going to be about? You see the boy right here. You see the African-American handsome little guy right here holding that soccer ball. He's on one side of the fence. Then you see here, you see the two white boys um, who are on the other side of the fence. And they're playing with their soccer ball, and he has his soccer ball on the other side. Hmm. So as you can see right there, I know some of you may be wondering, how come they're not playing together, right? Well, unfortunately, um, in the title, it says the word apartheid. And apartheid is something that took place in South Africa. And what it was, basically, to sum it all up, is that white people and black people could not do anything together. And not just because they couldn't do anything together, the main thing was that white supremacy was the law, which unfortunately we're still dealing with that to this day, not just in South Africa and Africa, but we're dealing with that here in America and all over. And it's, we know it has to be stopped immediately. But with white supremacy, basically it's saying that, hey, if I'm white or my skin is white, then I should live better than you. I can do things that you shouldn't be allowed to do. So, and also I don't even want to deal with you because your skin does not white like my skin. So that's the stem. That's the root of apartheid. So hopefully you guys out there will research that more with your parents or your grandparents, parents or guardians or whomever. So you guys can get more uh, clarity and understanding of what apartheid is. All right. All right. And also again, in South Africa, this is where this story takes place. So let's find out about the soccer fence. Title page. I kicked the egg shaped ball toward the goal. He shoots, I shouted. The ball soared past my sister's fingertips, just inside the leaning stack of empty cartons. Goal! With my fist in the air, I sprinted up the field along the wire fence, the out of bounds that separated our Johannesburg township from the rest of the world. Twice a month, my sister and me rode the Putko bus with Mama. She took us to a different part of Johannesburg where she worked. Stay out of trouble, Mama always warned us as she led us to the yard. My sister usually spent all day in the garden trimming and raking and planting and smiling. 
I spent all day with my face pressed to the fence, my eyes glued to the boys chasing after the black and white leather ball. Hey, I called, hey. But not a single boy ever looked my way as they raced up and back along the green carpet. One day, I whispered, I'm going to play on a field just like that. One day, real soon. Today, we celebrate liberty. Papa raised his hands to the heavens. Nelson Mandela had been freed from prison. Apartheid had finally crumbled. We paraded to FNB Stadium with the other families from our township. High in the packed upper deck, we waved flags, danced in the aisles, and listened to our hero. We are going forward, Nelson Mandela declared. The march towards freedom and justice is irreversible. But the march was slow. The next time I went to work with Mama, I peeked over the fence. Can I play? I called. Not a single boy looked my way. Then one time, a couple of years later, while I was helping my sister in the garden, their ball sailed over the fence. I'll get it, I shouted. I chased it down and bicycle kicked it high into the air and back over the fence, right to the blonde boy standing by midfield. He trapped my pass with his foot and booted the ball onto the field. Then he turned away and rejoined his game. Today we celebrate liberty. Papa raised his hands to the heavens. For the first time ever, people of all races could vote in South Africa. We stood for hours and hours in the snaking line at the polling station. When Papa finally cast his ballot, he hugged me tighter than he ever had. A few days later, the news reached our township. Nelson Mandela was now President Mandela, president of all South Africa. Our President Mandela loved sports. And when South Africa was chosen to host the 1996 African Cup of Nations, he helped rally the whole country around our team. On the rocky field in my township, and on the grassy field in Johannesburg. We rooted for our team, Bafana Bafana. The boys, the boys. I pretended to be John Shoes Moshu, the black midfielder. Shoes! I cheered when I booted the ball into the goal. On his field, the blonde boy pretended to be Mark Fish, the white defender. Fish! He cheered when he bicycle kicked the ball between the posts. In the opening match of the Cup of Nations, we watched Bafana Bafana thump Cameroon three to zero. Then in the next round, we faced Algeria. Neither team could find the net in the driving rain, but midway through the second half, Mark Fish stormed past a defender and blasted a strike. Fish! We danced around the tiny television in town. Fish! Algeria fought back and tied the match, but with just five minutes remaining, Shoes Moshu rocketed a shot. Shoes! We poured into the street. Shoes! Bafana Bafana won again! In the semifinals, neither Papa nor Mama believed Bafana Bafana had much of a shot against Ghana. 
the only undefeated team left in the tournament. You can't say we don't have a chance, my sister said. Things are different now. It's a new day in South Africa. I agreed, repeating the words I'd heard at school and in church and on the bus and everywhere since the end of apartheid. We can dream now. If Bafana Bafana wins, we must go to the finals. If Bafana Bafana finds a way to the finals, Papa said, we'll find a way to the finals. Bafana, Bafana found a way. Papa scraped together enough money for tickets, emptying change from the jars tucked behind the cupboard. When Papa finally purchased our tickets at the newsstand, I hugged him tighter than I ever had. Yay, bo, Bafana, Bafana, we cheered. High in the packed upper deck of FNB Stadium, we chanted cheers and sang Shosho Loza as Bafana Bafana took the pitch for the final showdown against Tunisia. Standing on my seat, I spotted the blonde boy standing on his seat in the next section. He saw me and raised his fist. I raised my fist back. The tense match remained, a scoreless duel well into the second half. 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes. Suddenly, Mark Williams slipped past two defenders and booted the ball toward Tunisia's net. Oh, very tense, huh? Then before we could sit back down, Bafana Bafana's amazing attacker broke free again and rocketed another ball toward Tunisia's side of the field. Go! The final whistle blew. Bafana Bafana had won the African Cup of Nations! Down on the pitch, the Bafana Bafana players paraded around waving flags and blowing kisses. The blonde boy and I led the snaking line of frenzied fans in and out of the aisles and up and down the steps as we celebrated the first championship soccer trophy we'd ever won. The next time I left the township, I saw the boys playing on their field. My name is Chris, the, the blonde boy said, trotting to the fence when he saw me. Do you want to play? Oh, yes, I replied. I'm Hector. He lifted the latch on the gate. When we play, he said, I like to be Mark Fish. I like to be Shoes Mo Shoe, I said. That means we're teammates. He opened the gate. I stepped through the soccer fence. The end. Well, once again, I hope you all 